All right. Uh, so yeah, that's in theaters now. I'm not sure if that's doing like any kind of, that's a Fox, uh, well, Searchlight Pictures now, not Fox, Searchlight Pictures uh, title. So I'm not sure what their uh, window is for theatrical, if it's standard 45 days, but you can probably check it out on uh, like IMDb or something. But if it is in theaters now, if that sounded interesting to you, uh, The Eyes of Tammy Faye is out now. So the other movie, uh, or series rather, that I mentioned at the top that we're going to talk a little bit about just briefly, and I'm sure over the next couple of weeks, like once we were able to see the the, the entirety of the series and, and Ronald's able to check it out, uh, we'll, we'll talk more about it. But um, Netflix's new series, Midnight Mass, comes out today. Um, this is a series from Mike Flanagan and Intrepid Pictures, um, his production company, um, that basically is just the newest Netflix series. He's done the haunting of uh, Black Manor, haunting of uh, haunting of Hill House, and um, beyond that, you know, we we love him. You know, in, in general, like all the movies he's kind of put out. Most recently, Doctor Sleep, uh, we were all big fans of. But this one seems to be, and from what I watched of the Q and A after this event last night, definitely even even interviews he's been posting. You know, this is definitely like a passion project that he has kind of like been uh, going at for the better part of a decade. Um, wow. Right after basically they um, had finished doing uh, Oculus, his feature film, you know, he kind of had, had had kind of cracked the first version of this script and, you know, kind of shopped it a bit and, you know, basically got turned down everywhere um, that they tried to kind of push it as a series, I believe. Um, and, you know, here we are roughly 10 years later. And it's a big title for Netflix. It's a big title for Mike Flanagan, for everybody involved. And I think it just is something that hopefully keeps the ball rolling for him. And it does you know, seem like he's only getting bigger and bigger in terms of the respect that he gains from general audiences. And I think people that are Netflix subscribers, you know, it seems that, you know, they know that they, they see that name, they see those properties. And these are some of the, the, the most well-received and most viewed series that they put out, the, the Haunting of series. Um, and I have no doubt that Midnight Mass was probably going to end up being the same. Um, but yeah, so again, there was an event that they kind of posted. Uh, I think it was Tuesday night or Monday night. Um, there was some like tweet that went out about like, watch this space at this time. And they basically opened this thing up for like, I, I want to say it was 1500 entries that they were going to oh. pick for, for like a special uh live stream event uh, last night so this would have been wednesday night um online where they basically intro the film uh, him and trevor macy the other uh, partner at intrepid pictures um they introduced the series um first two episodes aired back to back and then they did like a, a zoom q a uh afterwards so thankfully i submitted myself and uh, my wife's email address <laughs> and then they both got selected so yeah threw it in the air john john was able to use it and, and check out the first two episodes with me so i had to pose um, your wife which th they asked yeah. me some pretty pretty i thought inappropriate questions but i think i did all right <laughs> but, but but i prepped you well right yeah like, right <laughs> yeah good 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 i mean this kind of thing is really cool because this isn't like a press kind of thing. This is mm -hmm. like a, like a, this isn't like an advanced thing that we got through any kind of PR group that we talked to. This was purely like them trying to get some fans in to see this show a little early to, to, to talk it up a bit and to, you know, start sharing the word uh, or the gospel of the, uh, yeah, Midnight Mass. Spreading the gospel of Midnight Mass. So, I didn't go. think about the kind of, you know, you were talking about not knowing much about religion because you didn't weren't brought up with a lot of religion when you were yeah. talking about Eyes of Tammy Faye. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. You could, you could you know, this is a very religious episode of a uh, <laughs> movie. Yeah. The, uh, the movie and the movie. We've done. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I think the you're, I think, movie. you know, all the stuff we love about Mike Flanagan, I mean, knowing that this is like a passion project of his, like I, I honestly had, I had followed, the press about this and remember him talking about it and i all i knew about this one was people had said this was like a horror idea that really goes there and really like leans on the sort of darker side of horror whereas right. he's been lauded criticized however you look at it different people had a different reaction to how the haunting of series both of those end much more on a humanistic character-based note rather than about the scares necessarily and he had said in interviews right. that you know he had one idea that to him was a much more Kind of an ugly ending that didn't that he didn't feel compelled to you know a lot of writers will tell you they go where the story takes them and if a story seems to be right. going in an upbeat place for characters a lot of times that's just a kindness for an audience like you get to the end of a season of the like the haunting of hill house it would have felt horrible to have 
all of these characters uh, left in dismay. You kind of want there to be some light yeah. at the end of the tunnel sometimes. Sure. But other stories are built in a different way. So I'm intrigued whether he stayed with that idea or not. I'm intrigued by that aspect of Midnight Mass. It does feel there's a kind of starkness to it. And just the two episodes we were able to see, they, they fit right in with what you might like about Mike Flanagan's style. And in fact, you can start to see little stylistic ticks and hiccups that are sort of his things now. And it's kind of fun. I don't know. It's like watching a new Spielberg movie or something for me where it's yes. just like, here's a guy whose style I love and his way of dealing with characters I love and who I honestly, above all, trust that he's going to give me like payoffs of emotional stuff that's happening and of the absolute horror that might be coming. And there's a couple of brief moments in the two episodes we saw that really did fulfill the horror side of it. And as far as the emotional side of it, I think it's starting to get there. I, you know, it feels like a couple of slow burn episodes. I definitely wanted to watch the third one at the end of the second one. Um, I think it was wise to maybe show people too. I think at the end of the first movie, uh, the first episode, it might've felt more like that was an odd little taste, but this was more like you, you're, the hooks are a little bit more in you. And there's one particular character that is just... I can't wait to see what is up with this character, like what this character has in store for everybody else, because they kind of seem to yeah. be maybe the the real wild card here. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I, I mean, as a Flanagan fan and as someone who's ready, this this is that time of year where you want something you can really spend some time with. And I've loved yep. having those yep. those haunting of shows where you can spend several hours and really get into the mood and it's coming just at the right time of the year. So thank you, Netflix. And thank you, uh, <laughs> Mike Flanagan. Um, <laughs> Uh, are, are there standout performers or moments or anything that you want to allude to, Steve, without without saying too much? Because we don't really know that much, honestly, from what we Yeah, seen. I'll say we, we don't really know enough to really know, really. Uh, but I mean, I, I really like uh, Zach Guilford uh, a lot. I mean, I don't think he's in enough stuff. Most people will know him as Matt Saracen from Friday Night Lights, could be four. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it's nice to see him in this. And so far, I've been really into, into his performance. And uh, I like the idea of just like, you know, what Flanagan does in terms of kind of he keeps this like stable of actors, this family of actors that he kept calling, you know, in this Q&A that I watched after the screening, like, you know, just people that he continues to work with in uh, the very, you know, the various projects that he has. So, you know, you see some new faces in this, just like we saw new faces in Bly Manor, but some of those faces from Bly Manor you'll see in this and, you know, from Hill House you saw in Bly Manor and yada, yada, yada. So, you know, you'll see faces like Henry Thomas in this and, you know, his and uh, uh, what's his wife's name? Katie, Katie, Katie Siegel, Siegel, Siegel. Um, she's in this as well um, from Bly Manor. One of the guys who I thought was just really good in Bly Manor. Uh, Raul Colley is in here as like the sheriff of the town. How much the idea of, like, is, is amazing. I'm, I've, I've started he, to yeah, really love that guy. And like he was great in Legion. He was fun on Fargo when he popped up there. And he's he's really got some interesting stuff to do here, too. So. And, and he's like, and he's the other one of like these new faces that like are new to this Flanagan uh, family where, you know, you just like, you hear him gushing about the two of them in this, in the Q and A that was after this thing. And, you know, it's kind of cool to, to, to feel like, you know, we'll probably see these guys in other Flanagan properties and other things that he does, which is exciting because, you know, I just love seeing anything, you know, he does. And I, and I agree with what John was saying. I mean, it, it's just a taste. Um, to be able to see these two episodes almost to a detriment where I'm like texting John afterwards, like I kind of <laughs> wish I didn't watch the first two because now I just want to watch all of them and I have to wait two days now or three days or whatever it is. There's seven um, episodes total, right? Is that what I heard? Seven, right. Yep. Oh. Yep. Um, but yeah, I, I, ultimately it does feel like something that he's been building to. It does feel like something that is, it, you know, it, it, it feels wholly original. Um, it's something that is just something, you know, he's been wanting to do for a long time. It's something that he's even had in other movies, like in Hush and Gerald's Game. You know, people have been pointing out that, like, he has the Midnight Mass book in those movies in shots. So this wow. is the story that he's been trying to tell. And he even said at one point that, like, he considered like doing this as a novel at one point. Like, that, that's why he kind of has it in the movies as a novel. But um, kind of always saw it as a, a television series. So it's awesome that with the cloud that he got through his relationship with Netflix that it's able to be realized there. But it's just this awesome thing of like this world building, this little island, this this crocket island, you know, is what it's called. And you know, you you just get to quickly meet even over the course of two episodes. Like basically, you have a geography of the town. We talk about that a lot on this podcast. You know, the idea of space and like where you are and what is where and who lives here. And you you kind of get that really fast. And he's really mm -hmm. good at that. And like John talked about some of the trademark things that he does. 
you know, from Dr. Sleep, one of the coolest shots was like that aerial, like kind of shot where the girl is kind of uh, shining. And, you know, it's like this look of her like flying over the town and everything. And there's even something in this, in, in one of the episodes that we saw where there's like a similar, you know, shot of like, it looks like a, you know, a diorama almost of the yeah. town. And it's like this awesome filmmaking at, 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 at taking place. And it's just like that, that looks like a Mike Flanagan shot. Yeah. And it's an example that I thought of when you said that. And also um, like racking the shot so that it goes like 90 degrees. It, it, it and turns someone who's laying with the down character is kind of sideways and, and the way of dealing with maybe ghosts or memories. That's like very visual. That is familiar to yeah. I want to mention, uh, but when we're talking about performances, I, I don't want to not mention uh, Robert Longstreet, who was so great in the haunting of Hill house and yes, memorable yes, in Dr. One. Sleep, but man, just in the first two episodes of this, like if there's a character who I'm kind of worried about and kind of feel for it's this, this guy. Um, yeah. and he brings a lot to it. So yeah, it's full of that kind of thing that if you liked those shows, I think you might like this, but also I think even if you didn't, this, this does have something different for it. I think the milieu being like you said, Steve, this different kind of community that's isolated, not a lot of people. Yeah almost has the feel of like a Western where it's like, yeah. Oh, you're back in town, Jake. You know, so it's got this kind of feel of like all the store, like whatever this person left behind in this town that doesn't even necessarily seem to be connected to whatever's coming to town. So it's like, there's a, there's like a soap opera worthy family saga that's, that's cooking there on top of this, whatever this horror that might be happening. And yeah, Henry Thomas, I thought was really great and really understated in the episodes we saw too. Yeah. playing a little playing a little older which does that make you assume there's going to be some flashbacks at some point when you when you have two or three <laughs> actors who are probably obvious old age makeup yeah yeah aged up definitely right um, anyway a lot of yeah, fun i don't know man like it's it's the first two episodes i thought were great i mean i definitely when that second one stopped i was like you know wanting more immediately which is you know was spoiled with the binge model now um yep. but mm. Yeah, I'm very excited to see the rest of them. I can't wait for you to check it out, Ronald, uh, to catch up. And, you know, hopefully we can all check them out over the, you know, the first week and you know, maybe even talk a little bit about that when we come back with another episode. But again, you know, we say it all the time, but I, I'm so excited for what comes from Mike Flanagan and what he has coming up. And um, he really does feel like a special, a special filmmaker, you know, like he's one of the two or three that we always kind of, put in that 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 reference point but i just really do feel like he's batting a thousand for me like he's mm. just so consistent um for me personally and mm -hmm. i just think that there's something about the way he builds these stories these, these stories uh around people and feelings and, and memories and there's all these things that feel so relatable and to be able to put it in in the context of like a horror or a suspense or a thriller you know, I don't think it's easy to do, but he seems to do it with some sort of ease. And I don't think it's easy for him, but it just comes off so effortless, effortless. And uh, man, I, I can't wait to see the rest of the show. So, yeah. Uh, speaking of Netflix and horror, too, by the way, next Wednesday, the movie No One Gets Out Alive comes out, which is based on an Adam Neville book. Oh, and I that's saw you. Yeah, wrote, that's the guy who wrote that. the book, The Ritual, that that. Um, Netflix uh, movie was yeah. based on and it's the same production house basically it's andy circus's you know production house that made that oh, movie wow. that's also responsible for this one and um that book was horrifying and this movie the trailer looks like you know how horror trailers can be kind of like oh they, they market certain similar things over and over again yeah i think this movie has some more original things cooking in it than you might guess from the trailer just because they don't want to get into it but just the setup of like a boarding house where you're kind of financially strapped and you're stuck in this situation and like you can't really work your way out of it it's a little it's that similar similar to that thing you hear about how poverty makes you poorer and being rich makes yeah. you richer because mm. you'll cut your brakes when you have money and when you're poor you get fined constantly and so you're you're you, now you owe what you owed plus fines and you can never pay it back the way this in the book the way this girl gets stuck in this house that she's trying to get out of and she's trying to make enough money to like pay rent to get out of and it's just a bad situation i think they're they're piling it in with like uh immigrant populations in the movie is gonna it's gonna deal with the ideas of like you know your powerlessness is magnified by the fact that mm. you're an immigrant in this place um right anyway it just and, and the actor I, I don't know his name off the top of my head but he was good in um the outsider we've liked him in a few things he seems to be playing the heavy in this um he was like the possessed guy in that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, and the character uh, he's playing in this is a very, very creepy character in the book. So, yeah, I would just say, not having seen it, but just having a hunch that it might be something special. No one gets out alive comes out uh, Wednesday, the 29th, I think. 
on mm. uh, whatever it is next Wednesday on uh, yeah twenty nine yeah I got yeah that looks good the trailer was pretty good cool cool man did did, did you see anything else Ronald I know you usually see a few other little stragglers you'd like to Wanna throw give us a speed round before we wrap it up what did I see <clears throat> oh I I finished nine perfect strangers oh and I liked it. Okay. See, I need yeah, to. I want to rewatch it. I think I want to rewatch it. See if I picked up on stuff as it was going along. But oh, it's yeah. one of those. Okay, cool. Where where something? Yeah, something, something changes. Okay, that's something, cool. Something is afoot. Maybe I'm into it. I'm curious. But yeah, I mean that's it. Nothing. Nothing really else. I I started the festival stuff. I wanted. I'm super excited about a film that I saw, but I can't wait to talk about that in two weeks. Yeah, that's exciting. But yeah, that's, yeah, it's a good point. Let, let's remind true. everybody again: we 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 won't have an episode next we week. We will not be here. Uh, it's a week off, and then we'll be back on October um, October eighth. Yes, uh, we'll be talking about a whole lot of stuff. It'll mm. be a super sized episode, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. If you're listening and you want us to cover a particular movie, I put a post up on the Twitter, and there's a link to Fantastic Fest. If you find something, you just like, hey. I'm, this isn't coming out for a year. Tell us how it is. Let us know. That'd be pretty cool because I'd love to prioritize some movies based on you know ones that people are interested in knowing information about. Yeah. 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 Like like send up the uh, send up the alert. Like tell me how this movie is. Yeah. And we'll try to check it out. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Man. Yeah. Also, just we have no integrity. We will talk about whatever people want us to talk about. Yeah, yeah. We, we we'll, we'll go back to in the time machine and get Pogs. Remember Pogs from back in the day with Slammer? We'll go back and get those and review those. I have a whole new chance with Pogs. I missed them the last time around. Now oh. I can get into Pogs. So yeah, man. You, Is this going to become a podcast? <laughs> by, by, by the next episode, we'll be announcing Illumination's new Pog movie. Where, um... <laughs> How crazy would that be if they made like, like a, with our, all these the 10 action best shots? comedians in Hollywood are, are doing voice. <laughs> did, did, did I just give away Movie Studios' next hit film? <laughs> you did, man. Damn you it. Did. Damn it. <laughs> we, didn't secure the, we didn't secure the rights yet. I shouldn't have said anything. Damn. Uh, yeah, where they cast every huge yeah comedian that there is yeah. out there. What was oh our big hit was thrice was it thrice Bigelow? <laughs> People go back and find the Schmovie Studios movie game episode, and you'll know what we're talking about. We should do another one of those. That made me laugh <laughs> oh, so hard. That, that was episode. funny. That was funny. Uh, okay, cool. Well, that'll be the episode uh, today. We'll uh, check it in two weeks. Until then, you can go, like John said, go back and find that episode, Schmovie Studios. You know, find the catalog at movieschmovie.com. You can go back and listen to all of our episodes. You can jump on to whatever podcast platform you prefer to listen to podcasts on and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And if you are, go back to that platform and make sure you've uh, left us a review or some sort of rating if that's uh, an option for you. We'd appreciate mm. that. Um, and if it's not, most of those apps have a little share button, like, you know, that little square with the arrow pointing up. If you hit that guy and like, Shit just text, text the link to like a random person, mm. just pick somebody in your contact list. It's see easy, how it Steve. goes. It's this easy. Do you see the, <laughs> see the angle here? See how my fingers like. That's it. That's it. <laughs> just do it. A few things are that simple. So that's, that's, that's what they're not it. doing. Let's for try us, it. You know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do it. Um, but yeah, check it out. Subscribe. All the socials.com slash movie schmovie. I hit up the YouTube and check out some episodes there as well. If you, if you prefer the video element of it, um, that is available for you to watch. <laughs> right, Ronald? Isn't yes. That, isn't that what it is? You watch YouTube, right? You watch yes, it. Yes, you watch so okay, much just making, just making sure Hell what the yeah. kids do is they watch Hell the yeah. YouTube. I they thought they watch. fired it up. They fired <laughs> yeah, I always it up. Fired yeah. up. I thought they said, hey, let's fire up YouTube yeah. and peep yeah. some vids. <laughs> That's with actually a what sideways hat with a hat. Yeah, with a sideways hat. <laughs> I'm glad you knew that. I was trying. I was going for sideways hat energy, yes. and not down on my head either. Kind of like no, no, legs. just very like loose yeah. on your head and sideways. Yeah, I, absolutely. Good times. Ready for good that. times. Yes. Yay, YouTube. Uh, all right, cool. Well, we'll see you guys in two weeks. And as always, you've made our day. Thanks. Bye. John three sixteen. <laughs> this was three sixteen, right? <laughs>